So, 2D animation is hard for others, but it shouldn't be. I was a 2D animation student, but I already knew how to animate before that, using the corner of my notebook. But in today's case, part of the challenge is knowing the application. So in this tutorial, I will teach you how to use the animation feature of clips to do paint and also teach you enough animation knowledge and techniques so that you'll be able to animate at least a custom emoji, like a classic animation. So even though I already knew how to animate, just like anybody else, I also had to learn how to use an animation software at first, such as Clip Studio Paint. After I learned the minimal amount of necessities, finally I am able to move my mascot, just like this. But I'm not gonna do this to the whole video because it is very time consuming. And also, I'm capable of doing these types of animations. So without further ado, let's start the tutorial. First, you open Clips to the Paint and create new canvas. Make sure you've chosen the animation. The size of my canvas will be 128 by 128 in pixels, since that would be the most common largest size for emoji. You can make it larger if you're planning to make it a sticker, such as 512 by 512, but I'll keep it small to keep me out from temptation from adding more details. You can leave the settings as it is when creating a new canvas, but for me, I'll keep the title safe area so that I have a center guide for my canvas. I also add more blank space so that I could draw outside the frame to keep the consistency of the movement of my animation. I am using Eclipse Studio Paint X, so therefore I have unlimited frames for animation, but I want this tutorial for everybody. So I limit the frames to 24 frames only, so that Eclipse Studio Paint Pro users could follow. Also set the frame rate to 12, so that we can get a total of 2 seconds animation. Once you open up the canvas, everything you need is to be seen on the timeline window at the bottom of the screen. If you can't find the timeline or if ever you lost it for some reason, Drop down the window on the menu bar and select Timeline. Also, within the menu bar, you can find most of the animation features within the Animation tab. I also suggest to duplicate your canvas window so that you'll be able to see the actual size of the emoji while working on it. To do that, go to the Window tab, select Canvas, and choose New Window. Drag out the window, resize it, then adjust the zoom to 100% to display its actual pixel size. In the timeline, you'll be able to find all your animation layers. What's on your layer window will also be in the timeline, but arranged differently to make it animation-friendly workspace. You'll be seeing animation folder by default when you open an animation preset canvas. If you need more, you can just make an another animation folder by clicking this new animation folder icon. Animation folder is different than the ordinary folder we know. This is where you gotta place all of your animation cells and frames. You can add as many as you want if you're planning to make layers of animation. If you want changes to your timeline, such as change the frame rate to have more seconds, you can change it here on the upper left corner of the timeline window. Select timeline, then choose change frame rate. You can change the frame rate to 8 so that you can have 3 seconds of animation within 24 frames. Then you'll notice that the division in the timeline changes implying that it is already 3 second animation. Though for me, I keep it 2 seconds, 12 frames per second. You may also notice that there's no thumbnail on my timeline. That is because I keep it that way to have more space to work on my canvas. To turn the thumbnail on and off, you go back to the same settings, then select thumbnail size. Now for some people out there, <clears throat> me? It might be confusing why it is called cell when it's just similar to frame. Especially in today's technology, we used to hear camera frames, such as 60 FPS. So what could be the difference between cell and frame? To make it simple, cell can be used in multiple frames. Cell can be just a layer for animation. Example, one cell or one drawing, cell number 5 for this example, can be used in frame 12 and frame 14. Basically, it's just a drawing that can be repeated. Now with this in mind, in the timeline where you can find the new animation folder icon, beside that icon is new animation cell, which means you'll add a fresh new cell to the frame, and you could simply rename that cell by renaming the layer on layer window. 
Next to that icon is assign cell to frame, which means you're gonna add an existing cell to the frame. Or you can just right click on the frame where you wanted to add the existing cell and choose the cell you wanted to add. Cell can be a layer or a folder. You can put a cell into a folder and rename the folder using the name of the cell and the folder become the cell. But if you folder the selected cell, it will automatically name the folder same as the name of the cell. And next time you add a fresh new cell, the program will automatically put your layer into a folder. So now let's proceed to the fun part, the animation. There are principles of animation, but of course I won't discuss each of it here because I don't want you to be bombarded with information. But I am here to tell you that it is important, so you might want to search it up a little of your free time. Principles of animation is just basically life plus art. If you observe enough in life, you'll get an intuition on what to add next to your animation. Now for the design of my character emoji, would be a monkey king since I am a year of the monkey and a zodiac of a Leo so monkey king would make sense and make it simple as possible less details so less things to look at and less lines to animate more to animate more time to consume but that would be up to you how much time you can offer so the first thing you have to do when doing animation is drawing the keyframe poses Keyframe poses is just basically a starting pose of any action to happen, a start of change in action, and the end pose itself. The goal is even just the keyframe poses, you could still read the action of the character. Also enabling the onion skin helps you to see the next and previous cell you made. You can change its settings by going to the animation tab, show animation cells, onion skin settings. You can change how many cells to be shown so you can see further actions of your animation and you can change its color and opacity. These will be very helpful in later process. The animation won't be completed without filling the gaps. This is the time you need in betweens. In betweens is basically drawing between the gaps to have a smooth motion to your animation. The more frames the better, but here we only have less frame to fill in, so we're gonna keep it that way. With 12 frames per second animation, there's no way we can make it smoother, just like what we did here. It doesn't look fast enough, so there's no sense of speed on its movement. This is the part we're going to add the smearing to create an illusion of fast motion. In reality, when we move too fast, there should be motion blur. But since we're working on hard lines, adding smearing would do the trick with the help of double imagery on its pathway. Now I'll be adding text to my emoji. So there's a squash and stretch technique we could use for it. This is a little similar to smearing, but the difference is it will make the object stretch when moving in fast motion. This works perfectly in soft objects. It will stretch as it goes in and squashes when it reaches its destination before it becomes its original form. This will show how bouncy the object would look like. Finalize your work by adding extra movement such as hair motion after you move the character and some extra frame before your character stops moving. This subtle detail makes your animation looks more natural. Then when everything is done, you can start with the line art. If doing a line art, I'll suggest to use a vector layer. The good thing about vector layers is you can resize it to any size you want while keeping its sharpness. Make sure to use the operation tool to resize it, highlight everything and adjust and check the box on adjust line thickness when scaling. This will keep the proportion of the line when resizing. And check it if you want your line art maintains the same thickness by pixels. You can also change the thickness of the line art in the time. And the rest thing you gotta do is color. And that is all for today's video. Hope you learned something here and all of the things I share here can be used on animation in general. Thanks for watching.